Hi there, my name is Letitia Finder, and welcome to my channel for another episode of Follow on Friday. Today we'll be making this cute top folding card. It's perfect for the holidays. And so to make this card, we're actually going to be doing a lot of drawing, but I'm going to walk you through it. The only stamp on this card is this little squirrel here. And I, you guys have seen me use him before. And I just designed this card because I don't have a lot of stamps. And you know, I only have one set of like Christmas themed stamps, and I love to make Christmas cards. And I have quite a few that I have to make every year, so I thought, well, why don't I just use other stamps that I have because I don't have many, um, and I thought it'd be really great to repurpose them. So this is a great way to do that. You just go through your your little stash of stamps and get more use out of them. So that's what we're doing today with that little guy. I just think it's really cute. I love the expression on his face. You can kind of see like he's like staring at the presents in awe. It's really cute. All right, so we've got our our base here to make the sorry we got the base here and to make the base, I've just cut some white cardstock. Um, to what did we do here? So five by eleven. And it's, it's scored at five and a half, and that's in inches. So then I just cut out some more cardstock to fit right on top. So it's um, five by five and a half. All right, so I've got my little stamp here, and it just comes from this stamp set. It's this guy. It's by Hero Arts. And I, I'm pretty sure I put up that video last week, so you guys would have seen me do a little scene with them last week. Okay, so I'm just going to ink them up with uh, my Memento Tuxedo Black because I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring, so I need a, a good black here, something sturdy. All right, and I'm just going to stamp him in this bottom corner here. Um, <laughs> you guys know I can't help myself. I have to turn this to the side. Right here. There we go. Good. And that is all the stamping that we're doing on this card. So, <laughs> Alright, so I've got my pencil with me. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to be drawing presents. So basically I'm just drawing different size boxes. And I want to kind of pile them up so it looks like a lot. And I'm just going to start off by putting like a little baseline in here. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It's I actually like it better a little, you know, a little more uneven, a little sketchy even. It's uh it's nice when you know something is handmade, you know. Alright, so I'm just boxing it a little bit here first. I think I know I want a big present here because logically we're building like a little tower, so we kind of need to do that. So we've got our first box here. I'm going to go in and make another one here. And I'm just going to put a tiny one right here. And if that's really close to them, I might remove that. I'm just going to leave it for now though. I do want the composition to still make sense, right? So I'm going to go up just to give some height to this without having to do a million boxes and a lot of coloring. <laughs> I'm just going to make one really tall one right here. See my lines definitely aren't straight or anything and I'll go in and I'll clean them up a little bit. We will be going over it with some fine, li fine liner too. So Okay, but obviously not all boxes or presents are going to be the same size so I'm going to go in place one here and I'm gonna pop it up a bit just a little bit right here and then we'll add say another one here I love this because you know what it is drawing but it's a very very easy thing to draw and 
I think that's so great, especially for someone who is interested in drawing but isn't quite feeling confident. I think that this is a great, easy kind of beginner project to do. And it's a super cute card, so <laughs> you can't really go wrong there. Okay, and then I'm just going to add one more as like a little topper right there. All right, I'm just going to go in and clean up these lines a bit on the side there because it's a little too sketchy for me to follow. All right. I think actually the one that we're going to put down here will make it really small. So, like that. Yeah, I think that works really well. All right. So to add some visual interest to it, I'm going to go in and add just some different designs to a few of the packages and add a couple bows here and there. And I think we're going to start with, maybe we'll make this one. So I, I just did this one like a bikini cane because I thought it stuck out the most. And that's very festive, recognizable kind of symbol to put in there. And all I'm doing is just drawing some lines to make stripes. And then we'll alternate the color when we go in and color it. Um, on the original, I went in and I did stars on this one. You can do whatever you want. Um, I think I'll, I'll do hmm, maybe some polka dots on this one. Because actually stars, for some reason, is something I have trouble drawing. I don't, I don't know what it is exactly. I did do it on this other card here, the first one I did. You can see there, and they look fine. But I don't know if I can really instruct somebody on how to do that because I feel like I don't do it very well. So. <laughs> All right, and I think we're just going to go in and do polka dots on this one as well. We'll vary the size of these ones. Kind of make everything a little more cohesive here. That one can be really dotty. Okay. And then this one we're going to add in just some ribbon on either end. Some ribbon on this one too. Just a cross on this one. Basic present wrapping. <laughs> How do you guys wrap your presents? I'm kind of curious. Do you guys like go all out with ribbon and, and like a nice main tag and all of that? Generally, I do something like this. Especially for like family and stuff. I think it looks really nice under the tree and it you know it just shows that you put a little more effort into it I guess <laughs> all right so now I'm gonna go in and put in a few bows and I'm gonna do two different kinds of bows the first one I'm gonna show you here I'm just gonna add in right here so I'm just drawing a square and then from there I'm gonna draw almost like a teardrop shape coming out of it on either end And then we're gonna add in like a semi circle there. Because that's gonna be the inner part of the bow. Then we're just gonna jut that out. It's a straight line with a little cut out triangle, a little, like a little stick in on both sides. And then back in and taper it in as you're going up. So curve it. Taper it out on this side, stick in stick in so we got a little cutout triangle and the same thing back up so you've got that little bow there I know this is a little bit small I hope you guys can see it well enough um, right, and then we're going to do the same thing on this one so I'm gonna go in 
and cut the square. Again, teardrop shape, kind of on the side here. So instead of it being like a pointed end like that, just stops where it meets the, you can't really see it. So that's like a normal teardrop shape. It's got the point at the end, like a flower petal. Just cut it off there. So you're actually, this is where the square is. So you're just ending it right where the square is. Hopefully I can erase that enough on my card. <laughs> That probably wasn't brilliant. That's okay. All right. So then we'll just give it the semicircles again on the inside. And there we go. So the second kind of like bow we're going to do is this one. And I'm going to put a circle in the middle of this one. And then we're basically doing the same shape. So like you're drawing a flower and you're just going to keep drawing these petals. See? And then you're going to go in and add in those semicircles on the under end, the bottom end of each one. Like that. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing to this top one here. I'm going to do a square in the middle of this one just to change it up a little bit. And then again with the semicircles. Oops. There we go. All right, that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna go in and add our string of lights. Oops. Ooh, sorry, I hit my camera there. All right. And to do that, we're just gonna. Oops. Did that a little too low. When you're drawing these in, you have to keep in mind that there are going to be lights sticking out, so you don't want to kind of make it too low right there. So it's just basically big kind of circles, like how you would draw like rolling hills or something like that. It helps you to imagine, like envision it. You can flip it over and draw like that. So you can play with it and kind of do whatever you want with that. On this one, I, I did it a lot smaller. I actually think I'm gonna just kind of do it a little bit smaller on this one, add in a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring it up a bit more here. There, and there. Just because you have a lot of empty space right here, so I'm going to add in something. All right, and to draw the lights, this is actually really easy. Basically, what you're going to do is draw a little square. I actually, here, I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it on here first. So here's our string of lights. Basically going in and making a square. And then you're bringing it out again into a teardrop shape. But this time the rounded edge. So this is your teardrop shape. This time the rounded edge here is being cut off and into the square. That's all you're doing, and you're just going to keep doing that. This is just quick. Like I'm just kind of scribbling this for you guys, but just so you get the idea. 
Okay, so that's what I'm going to go in and do here. Um, first, I'm just placing the squares where I know I want the lights to go, and I'm just alternating them on either end, on either side, so that I've got lights sticking out of both ends. So that's like in, this one's out, in, and then outside, inside, outside. Like that, and then I'm going to go in and draw the bulbs. They actually, they always look a little bit funny in pencil, I think. They don't look quite right. But when you go in and color them, they look, they look fine. You know exactly what they are. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought that when I was drawing the first one too, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> are, they, are they just going to think I'm crazy? They don't know what I'm doing. All right, so we have them here. I actually make a couple of these a little smaller. I made them a bit big. And I'm trying to press kind of dark so you guys can see me drawing them. And normally I wouldn't and I'm getting some lines like when I need to erase. So it's, it depends on what pencil you're using too. Like right now I'm using like a 9B so... <laughs> Generally, the lighter you push, the better off you're going to be because you're not going to get those uh, like the leftover residue marks when you erase. All right, so now all that's left to do is to outline and color. So for this, I'm, I'm just going really simple. I'm not going to be doing any kind of fancy outlining or anything like that. I'm just using my 0 0.3 Copic Multiliner in black, obviously. And I'm just going to outline everything we just did. So actually I'm going to lighten a few of these lines. It's just so I'm not messing with the, the liner too much. So that it can really sink into the, the paper. It doesn't really matter where you start your outlining or anything. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep or I'm going to outline just a couple of these presents so you guys can see. Just watch me outline something um, like in real time. And then I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to speed up the rest of this outlining because there's not really anything that needs to be known while I'm doing this. I'm just following the lines I already created. And again, too, if you guys have any kind of questions or anything about what I'm doing or, I don't know, products I'm using or anything like that, like, don't be shy. Like, let me know. You can ask me in the comment section or send me a message or something like that.
All right, so I'm gonna stop the video now and speed it up for you guys. And I'll be back in a moment to start coloring with you. All right, all right, now it's time to color with our Copics. And bonus points for whoever noticed that I, I messed up the lights there. <laughs> so I, I went in and I erased all of the, the pencil marks and especially up in where the lights were because um, he was seeing marks from when I originally drew them and then fixed them. Like I said, I was drawing a little too dark, so. Oh well, we fixed it, it's cute. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna get started. I'm just gonna work on the background first. And for the background, I'm using a light um, color. This is E50 and it's called the eggshell. So I'm just going to go in and do that and I'm just using the whole background, coloring the whole background and I'm avoiding any of the, and the um, other things that we need to color. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed that up for you just so you don't have to sit here and watch me for however long it takes. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to go in and color, and I've just picked very common or very Christmassy kind of colors for the presents and for the lights, and the squirrel is just going to be a couple shades of brown. So I'm going to start off with a squirrel, and oh, I've lost my marker. <laughs> Alright, so we've got um, our lightest shade is E13. And that's light suntan. Our medium shade is E15, which is dark suntan, and our like our darkest shade is E18, which is copper. So we're gonna start off with our lighter shade and just give them a base color. And I'm coloring with Copics, but you guys can use whatever markers you have, or you know, go in with pencil crayons or watercolor, whatever you want. I think a watercolor would actually give this this card a really like, light and pretty look but uh, yeah I am, I'll probably end up doing a little bit of a a pencil crayon tutorial uh, soon um, probably do a card with some with some pencil crayons, maybe some cheaper supplies, just in general, and then um, also just, just some techniques and stuff. So now I'm just going in with my medium color, and for this little guy, I'm just going to go in around his edges here, and into his tail. His arms and the top of his head. Alright. And I'm just going to go in and blend that out again with our lighter color just to soften it up a bit. We're going to go in with our darkest color. And we're going to start off at the base of the tail here. And just kind of flick our way up a bit. So we're going to make it look bushy. So I'm just adding little strokes. 
I can focus that a little bit better for you guys. And so I'm just adding little strokes of color, the dark color of his tail. And you don't need a lot to get the point across. That actually works really well. And then again, I'm just going to go in and darken up around his legs and his back and arms and basically what we just did. <laughs> just trying to make that line a little thinner. And then I'll go in with my medium color and soften that up a bit by blending it out. And I'm just going to leave like the tip of his tail here pretty light. Maybe I'll go back in with that lighter color too. There we go. He's looking pretty cute. And he's pretty basic. There's not a lot going on with him. Okay, now we're going to go in and start on the presents. And I'm just going to go in and do kind of one color at a time. So I've got two red colors. I've got lipstick red, which is R29, and I've got peony, which is RV69. And this is obviously, it's like a red, red violet, so it's, it's got a purple base to it. But I thought it would make a nice darker red color, and I don't actually have a lot of reds, which is kind of weird to me but so this is kind of along the lines of a more candy cane red so I'm gonna go in and just add some red stripes to our stripe package here and make it look like a little candy cane or rather I guess a big candy cane <laughs> And the one thing, just because I didn't mention it after I colored the background, I'm just using Recollections, like white cardstock, and I find that the Copics don't blend well on this. So, I mean, it's it's fine when you're doing like smaller things, like say these little stripes or the like the bows or whatever. But when you're doing a bigger area like this background, you can kind of see. I mean, it doesn't look bad or anything. It's just a little, it's a little spotty where on a paper that's made for this it it won't be so so spotty so <laughs> just a fair warning there I mean you can use whatever whatever paper you want um, I'm just going in and I'm gonna just make this present a solid red Alright. Oh, you know what I just realized? I actually was going to put stripes into this little one and I didn't do that, so I'm going to do that now. There we go. Alright, and then I'm going to go in with this <clears throat> darker red. And I know I want to... Oops. Looks like I also forgot a little one here. There we go. And I'm just going to go in and do this one. Just a solid color as well.
And you can get as complicated with this coloring as you want. I don't I don't want to go too complicated with this. I think that's uh, some pretty simple coloring on this card. It is very effective. And it's a very it's a fairly small uh, space to be coloring anyway, so. All right. And for this this ribbon here, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of blend the two colors a little bit to make it look Know, maybe a little vel like velvety. So I'm just adding it on the edges of this ribbon, bringing it out in a tiny bit. And then I'm going to go in with that lipstick red again and just color the rest of it in. And while it's still wet, you can just kind of play with it a bit. If you, it's just a good way to give some uh, a nice playful texture. There you go. And I think I'm going to do just a couple of these stripes down here in this color as well. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go in and just kind of work on one color as I, at a time as I go. Um, I think I'm going to go in with my gold right now. So I actually just picked up this color and I'm really impressed with it. it it's actually quite uh, quite metallic looking. Uh, it's not sparkly or anything like that, but uh, it's Y28 and it's Linet Gold. So I think we're going to go in and make this one solid gold. It is a very like a Christmassy gold to me, I guess. <laughs> It is a deeper color, but uh, I quite like it. I just picked it up while I was at Michael's because I knew for sure I didn't have it, and they didn't have a huge selection of individual markers uh, last time I was there. So I just I knew for sure I didn't have this one. It looked really interesting, so I grabbed it, and uh, I'm actually really happy I did. I'm really enjoying this color. I think we're going to do the base color of this one. And like I've mentioned in my other videos, if you're finding that um, my pace is maybe a little slow for you, or maybe if it's a little fast sometimes, you can go into, if you're on a desktop, I'm not sure if you can do this on mobile, but if you go into um, like where your play button and stuff is on the video player here on YouTube, you can go to the setting button, which is like the little gear icon, and there is a, a setting in there that allows you to speed up or slow down a video. So just a tip for you guys, <laughs> I'm going to do the circles on this one.
Okay, I'm also going to do this bow on the top here in gold, but um, I want to darken it up a bit first. So I'm going to go in with some C, with C5, which is a gray. That's cool gray number five. And where the shadows would be, so right here, right in these little creases where the folds would be on the ribbon, I'm just adding in some of that gray. Just because I'm going to go over this with the gold and that will darken the gold uh, a bit more easily instead of going over and over and over it. So, and then I'm just going to add my layers. There we go. Alright, and I think we're going to move on to green. And I've actually got two different greens here. Or three different, actually, sorry. I have apple green, which is G14. I have Nile green, which is G07. And I have pine tree green, which is G29. And I'm going to start off with my lightest color, which is this apple green, G14. And I'm going to color in these ribbons down here. And also as a base color for this one. I've also got this one as well so I'm just going to go in and because this is my lightest color I'm just going to go in and add it onto the places that will be lighter on the bow so and then I'm going to go in with my Nile green and just add in the shadows for this one. And this is actually going to be my lightest color on this bow here. So I'm just going to go in and throw that on. And then I'm going to go on with the darker color, which is Pine Tree Gray G29. I'll give it a little shadow on the bow there, on the little ribbon sticking out. Okay, and I'm going to go in with this Pine Tree Green, Pine Tree, <laughs> Pine Tree Green. I don't know why that was such a tongue twister. And I'm just going to add in some color to this one. And also just base color is this top present here. There we go. Right, and our next color is going to be like a we're going to create a silvery kind of color. So I've got C1, which is cool gray number one, and then I've got C5, which is cool gray number five. And I'm going to start off with a base layer of the C1. So I'm going to this is going to end up looking like a shimmery kind of 
silver. I mean, it's obviously not actually going to be like literally or glittery or metallic, but it's going to give it that kind of look. So just get the paper wet with that color. Then I'm going to go in with the C5 and just add in little little like strokes here and there, little streaks. Just kind of brushing it on. There's no real method to it. I'm just kind of randomly placing it. So I know that looks kind of weird right now. <laughs> but while it's still wet, you want to go in and blend it out with the C1 again. And the faster you do it, the nicer it'll blend out. Right, and I'm just going to go in and do that here as well. I'm going to do this bow silver, so I'm just going to go on with the lightest color on the top. And then the dark color in the shadows. And we're pretty much done. All we have to do is color in the lights, and those are really simple. So, go in and do that. So, for the lights, I'm just going to alternate between colors. So, I'm going to use lipstick red, which is R29. I'm going to use that line at gold, which is Y28, and I'm going to be using um, the Nile Green, which is G07. I keep saying O, it's not O. So um, all I'm doing here is going in and I'm alternating the colors. I'm going to go in with red first. Green. Oops. and then gold. And just keep doing that. Green, gold, red. Just to make this a little quicker. Green, gold, red. Green, gold, and then we can't see that one. Right, so we're going with the green, do the same thing. And then the gold. Okay, and then I'm just going to go in with the C5 and I'm going to color like these little metal bases of the, of the lights. I guess on a lot of them they're actually like plastic. I don't know. I don't, I don't have lights in front of me, so. But I figured that this, uh, this would work pretty well for that. And the last thing I'm going to do to kind of, last two things I'm going to do to kind of finish this off because I forgot to do this. I'm going to give uh, this little guy like a little shadow under him here just with C1. And down here just so you can kind of tell that there is 
indeed a floor there, and he's not just floating in thin air. Let's go give him a little bit of a shadow up here, a little in there, and then I'll just blend that out with the with the eggshell again. I knew I was looking at this and thinking I was missing something, but I couldn't quite figure out what it was. But there, we figured it out. There we go. All right, the very last thing just to kind of finish it off is I've got a white gel pen. And I'm just adding a little highlight on each light. Just a little line. And I just add some brightness to the card. All right, all that's left to do is to stick it on the base, which I will do right now. See, as you can see, this cardstock's not really meant <laughs> for this, so. And I'm just gonna do that with some double-sided double tape here. I think this might be an especially cute card to add like a little paper pocket inside so that you can uh, add in a gift card or something because there is a bunch of presents on the front of it. I actually have a another follow on Friday that I put up. It was two weeks ago. It's the gamer birthday card and I'll link that uh, in the description box below and I'll put an i card here for you. Um, that shows me making a little paper pocket if you'd like to see that. Oops. All right, I'm gonna just sticking it on. But of course the tape's gonna give me problems now, right? Because this video isn't long enough already. <laughs> I know it was a long video, but you know what? There was a lot of coloring and whatnot for this card, and I really wanted to walk you through drawing on it, <laughs> drawing on the card. I think it's a really great idea to take stamps you already have and kind of repurpose them for whatever occasion you have. And you know, why not? Why not draw? Why not to be a little more creative with it, right? All right, let's just stick that on. It's a little off center. That's okay, we can fix that. All right. There it is. It's a great top folding card here. All right, if you like this card, I am having an event running on my channel this coming week, and I'm calling it the Seven Days of Christmas Cards. So it's a full seven days. So from Sunday, November 22nd to Saturday, November 28th, I'll be posting a Christmas card tutorial. Uh, I will be having them sped up so that you're not uh, watching this long of a video. <laughs> no, this was long. Um, but yeah, so they'll be going up every day next week from Sunday to the next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so EST, um, or my time zone anyways. <laughs> so you guys can figure that out to where you are, but they will be up so you can watch them even if they, if you don't, uh, catch them as soon as they go live. And yeah, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll be able to see them here on YouTube. You'll be notified when I upload any, any new video. And while you're at it, you should go over to my Facebook page and like, like that, <laughs> like I'm doing ear quotes and you can't see that. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Cause I think it's, a, it's pretty worthwhile. You know, I, I add in some, you know, daily life things, but you know, there's some bonus stuff and, and artwork you don't get to see, uh, on here. And you know, you get to be the first to know what's going on on the channel and, and on the websites and whatnot. So. I think it's worth it if you want to go over there and do that. And I also love to chat with you guys. So, you know, be sure to say hi if you go visit me on there or any of my social media platforms. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful start to the Christmas season because you know what? It's really around the corner now. So I wanted to get these out for you. And until next time.